everyone. Welcome back to the Change Your Mind podcast. I'm your host, Chris Ashley. Today, I'm really excited. We are going to talk all about hypnobirthing, which is a topic that's hitting home right now since I am seven months pregnant. Uh, but first, a couple of quick announcements. Check out the links in the show uh, in the show notes where you will be able to find uh, access to my book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality, and paper book, audio book, ebook. You'll be able to find my courses, free workshops, and where to follow me online. So please connect. Let's help make this world a little more beautiful, a little more peaceful, a little more uh, connected. So I'm really excited for my guest today. So Carrie Tushoff is with me today, and Carrie is the founder and director of HypnoBabies. So HypnoBabies is a hypnobirthing childbirth education program. And Carrie has loved being a childbirth educator, doula, speaker, and hypnotherapist for over 30 years, teaching families to trust in their minds, bodies, babies, and the process of childbirth is her passion, and hearing healing birth stories is her joy. Educating people who need ch- who need change and healing about the life-altering benefits of therapeutic hypnosis for many physical, emotional, and financial issues is also paramount to Carrie. So Carrie, welcome. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm like I said, I'm excited to be here because Carrie so generously gifted me your program and I just started it this week. So I feel like I this conversation is coming at the perfect time and I'm so grateful to you and the work you do. It's so important. And, you know, I, I gave this little bio talking about what hypnobabies is, but as always, I love to start with everyone's origin stories. So tell me how this all came about. What led you on this path? All righty. Uh, Well, it all started with my first birth, but it actually started before that when I was just minding my own business, living my life. And a friend of mine had a baby. She had her first baby um, with unmedicated. And I didn't even know people did that. I thought they went in and had an epidural and that was it. Boom, boom. And she told me all about it. She used a program called the Bradley Method. And she said it was amazing that she learned so much. And uh, the most thing that she learned was how to relax deeply and how to breathe deeply, which which does help. And so she had this unmedicated birth. And she said, yeah, it was really painful, but she did it. And she was really happy she did it. And however many kids she had from now on, that was going to be her way. And she went on to have five more, by the way. Wow. Um <clears throat> So I became super fascinated, looked it all up and just got bitten by the birth bug and became a Bradley natural childbirth instructor. And I learned so much about childbirth, nutrition and exercise, staying healthy and low risk and how all those things work into having an easier pregnancy and birthing, keeping your uterus strong and your body strong and your baby strong, all of that and deep relaxation and, you know, breathing and all those things. And I was just loving it. Teaching people in group classes and then going to their births also as a doula, which is a labor assistant for any listeners who might not know. And so I was with them when they had their babies, many of them. And I was doing it for free because I really wanted this education about childbirth. So, um, you know, yeah, they were in a lot of pain, but it, I thought, oh, this is manageable. And about half of them had unmedicated birth. So I thought that was really good. And I thought I would know everything there was to know, to know when it was my time. And of course, then I got pregnant and um, I was so confident and so happy to know all these things. And then I went into labor, which we call birthing time in hypno babies. And my baby was, her head was turned around. For those who don't know what a posterior baby is, the back of their head is grinding on the nerves in your spine all the way down and out. And uh, uh, I'm sorry to tell you this because you're a pregnant woman. (laughs) I'm like, oh, that sounds painful. (laughs) Um, And usually I do not agree with anybody telling their painful, awful birth stories to somebody who's pregnant, but we're doing a podcast It does get better and it has a happy ending. I promise you. Um, So yeah, it was, it was, it was shocking to me how painful it could be. And I, I was at a freestanding birth center at first got there and they turned me away. So that was the first thing. Um, 
I was in so much pain and they said, you're only one centimeter. So go away, come back when you're about four. And I went back, you know, when I thought I was four centimeters. <laughs> so it was very disruptive. And um, then I just, it was, it was a good day and a half from the very beginning to the point where I was crying and screaming and saying, you got to do something to my husband. And he said, well, that's it. You know, we called it and we went across the street in a wheelchair to the hospital where I met my new best friend. And that was the anesthesiologist who was coming at me with a great big needle to put my back and give me an epidural. And then after that, I had a very, very healthy respect for people who choose epidurals. Before that, I had thought everyone should have natural childbirth. And then, you know, at the point of me having an epidural, I realized, you know, that there were ways and there were reasons and there were things that people would, you know, would it be happening that people would choose an epidural. So that helped me to be a much more balanced childbirth educator after that. However, I was pretty traumatized. I was traumatized by the pain itself and by the fact that I didn't have my unmedicated birth anymore. And uh, it took me a, quite a long time. I did have it, that epidural, so they had to push and pull the baby out of me because I couldn't feel anything. So that was another thing that really kind of traumatized me as well, because I had this beautiful thing in my mind of ha pushing my baby out under water in a big tub you know, none of that happened, but of course now I can look back on it and say, I'm glad that it did happen. And right. I can explain that in a minute, but four years later I had my son and it was only seven hours, but again, his head was turned around. He was posterior. I had back labor and I was screaming my head off. And at one point my sister said to me, you know, it should never have to be this hard. And right there in the middle of my birthing, I decided that even if I never had another child, and I did not, um, that I was going to find a way that other women did not have to suffer like this uh, if they wanted a more holistic and unmedicated experience for their baby's birth. And I did. I went out, and it took me a while, but I found hypnosis and... Uh, then I did a whole lot of research and I found hypnotherapy and pain management for different things using hypnosis. And one of the things was childbirth. <laughs> there was a program called Gerald Kine's Painless Childbirth Program. And I took that training and found out that there was something called hypnoanesthesia. And that is a real thing where people who are allergic to medical anesthetics, but they have to have surgeries of different kinds, any kind, dental, medical, whatever it is, uh, but they can't because they're allergic. They work with a hypnotherapist ahead of time and they use only hypnosis and hypnoanesthesia during the surgery and afterwards for recovery. Wow. And once I found out that was a thing... <laughs> Um, then I asked Jerry, who is no longer with us, Gerald Kine, if I could use those techniques in a childbirth education program. And he said, I can't wait to see what you create. <laughs> and that was in 2001. So since then, uh, I did create hypno babies, hypno birthing, and, uh, it has been updated many times to be an evidence-based childbirth program too, with all of the things that you would want in it, uh, including postpartum and comfort measures of all kinds and very deep somnambulistic hypnosis. So, um, that's how it all began. And every single day, my life is just full of helping people to have an easier pregnancy and birthing and postpartum, new parenthood, all of that. We even have a fertility program. So we get them pregnant too. And, you know, my heart is in all of that to help people because I know from a very personal place what it is like to want to become pregnant, to become pregnant, to have a baby. And all that happens afterwards. And I want to make that better for just everyone, no matter who chooses that path. And no matter how they decide to have their baby, you know, hospital, birth center, home birth, whatever, you know, in whatever way, you know, I support all of that and I honor it. So that's my story. Thank you so much for sharing it. I can feel your love and passion 
as you speak. And it was like almost like bringing tears to my eyes listening to you talk about it. So uh, I really appreciate just your vulnerability and sharing your story. And don't worry about telling me any scary birth stories. I'm, I'm loving my positive affirmations and my hypnosis. And one thing I just want to highlight that, that you kind of glazed over with your, with your program is it like fully encompasses way more than just hypnosis, right? Like it's like a birth program. You're, you're teaching, um, women all about uh pregnancy and childbirth in general and hospital stay and all the things right like it's it's really comprehensive yes thank you very much um hypno babies is a complete childbirth program so again we do have all the nutrition and exercise and staying healthy on low risk and things you might want to avoid, all the stages of birthing, how to use hypnosis for pregnancy, birth and after, you know, all the the normal comfort measures that you would also use, the positional changes and things like that, you know, what a doula is, what a hypno doula is, how to, you know, if you choose, include them in your birthing and make sure that they use all the same words that we use in hypno babies and the same philosophies and techniques, which are very different than normal birthing programs. And um, yeah, we teach, we teach everything. We teach new mom and baby care and, you know, um, everything postpartum depression and, you know, what to look for and just everything that a really great childbirth education program would choose. And another thing is that along the way, (laughs) I found that birth partners were in need of some help themselves. So this, this came from a birth partner who attended my hypno babies class early on. And he came in with his wife, they joined the class because her cousin had taken hypno babies and had such a beautiful birth. And she was fine. This mother was fine, but the birth partner was a bag of rags. (laughs) <laughs> and he just was so upset and saying, oh, this is her fourth baby. And the last three times they treated her so badly at the hospital. And I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know anything. And I was thinking, oh, man, <laughs> this guy needs some his own relaxation and hypnosis. So I created our birth partner relax and feel confident track, which our birth partners listen to. And they use their own techniques for staying calm during pregnancy and knowing that the birthing is a perfectly normal thing and how to help the, the birthing mother and all of that. And of course, in hypno babies, we give them a lot to do if they so choose, if they want to be a big part of this, if the mother wants them to be a big part of this. They have a whole part in our quick reference booklet called the birth partner's guide that teaches them what their role is in the pregnancy, in the birthing, postpartum, everything. And that is really, really important. They, first of all, most birth partners want to really be included. And second of all, they need to stay calm. They need to stay calm during pregnancy, but they also need to stay calm during the birthing so that they can can help and be that emotional and physical comfort to the mom. And we also included a script called change of plans. And most people never even hear that track or see anything about it because what it is for is if a person gets into their birthing time, which is what we call labor, and something changes, say they didn't want an IV, but now it has become apparent that they need fluids. This helps them to use hypnosis to flow with that change so that your blood pressure stays normal, your heartbeat stays normal, your emotions stay nice and positive, your veins don't go flat, things like that. And people can use it for any change of plans that they have. And most people don't use it because everything goes beautifully well. But if it does change from anything from just having an IV to all the way to having a cesarean section, they can use this particular hypnosis track to stay calm and relaxed and just flow with the process. Um, You know, we developed other tracks as well for eliminating nausea and fear of childbirth and insomnia and fear of needles and all the things that we go through as pregnant women that we need a little bit of help with. So 
hypno babies um, is is the big picture. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm delighted that people have come forward along the way to say, why don't you create a track about such and such like come out baby, which is for helping to start birthing waves. If you're even, you know, if, if you're getting to the point where you are maybe getting to 40 weeks and they're mentioning the I word induction or whatever, and then we can help the mind and the body work together to get that birthing started. You know, I mean, there's so many things when people come forward and say, we need this, we need that. And we're, we're delighted to help. So that's, that's what we do. Yeah. I'm glad you just said that. Cause I'm gonna have to make sure I have that change one downloaded just in case there is any change. And you touched on something uh, that just made me think when you were talking about how that, that partner was saying that the hospital treated the mother badly at the last birth. One of the things you have is affirmations and it's not even hypnosis, but it's these awesome affirmations. And I feel like you touched on every fear that I, and frustration that I like, didn't even know that I had. But then like, as I heard them the first time I was like, wow, I'm really glad to be hearing this because like that was in there somewhere. And it's, it's things like having agency at the hospital or babies are born on their birthday. Not when doctors say they are, or your baby's safe inside of you or pregnancy is natural and safe. Like just hearing those things, being told those things is just so comforting. Um, and I, I have, I have so many questions. Um, the first one, so just to bring it way back to basics, because, you know, I like to, I like to bring science into this. And I also like to demystify a lot of stuff for listeners. I don't want to assume that anyone knows what we're talking about. So on a very basic level, you know, how would you describe hypnosis to people? What is somnambulistic, which I'm probably mispronouncing? And uh, what would you say to people who are afraid of hypnosis? All great stuff. And I love to talk about this because it really does dispel some misinformation. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, most people think that hypnosis is what they see on the stage where you know, uh, somebody is plucked from the audience uh, and being forced or co coerced mentally to quack like a duck or sing like Elvis and you seemingly cannot not do it. You absolutely must. And that is entertainment. It's a lot of fun and everyone is playing along. So real therapeutic hypnosis is completely different. Hypnosis itself is a very focused form of concentration. It is also something that we all do many times a day, all day long, every day of our lives. For instance, when you are going to sleep, when you are waking up, you are in a state of hypnosis. When you are reading anything, whether it's a book, a magazine, the newspaper, a tablet, whatever it is you're reading, you're in a state of hypnosis after just a few minutes from the focus and concentration of your mind at that time, your eyes going back and forth on the page, that sort of thing. And anytime... Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Question though, is that why there's reading in the Hypno Babies program too? <laughs> there's tons of reading because there's tons of information that you really need to know in order to create the kind of birthing that you want. Okay. You mentioned before about you know, choices and interventions and things like that. Well, we teach all about the benefits and the risks and the alternatives of all of the common interventions, which we call choices because we teach you that all decisions in your pregnancy, your birthing and postpartum belong to you. And that is a super important thing for you to know along the way to create the kind of birthing you want, research what you want, put it down on paper and then go in and make it happen. If things change, if they need to change, then you flow with it. But, you know, to automatically assume that you have to do everything that nurses and doctors tell you just because it's hospital protocol or whatever it is, and there are many things that it could be, is erroneous. So there, that's that about that. Sorry to sidetrack you. <laughs> about hypnosis itself. We are on screens all day long. So whether you're on a little screen or a tablet, 
or a laptop or a TV or a movie screen, you are you start to go into an alpha state, which is a, a hypnotic state where your brain's waves slow down and you are in hypnosis. And of course, we all know that when we're driving, we're if we're focused on what's going to happen when we get to wherever we are, even our grocery list, and we're thinking really hard about that as we're driving, but all, all of a sudden we're at a traffic light or we're at our destination and we think, what happened to the last five minutes? I am so confused. I don't have a conscious memory of that. You were in hypnosis. So this is a very common thing that we all go through many times a day, every single day of our lives. It's not religious. It's not airy-fairy. It's not new age. It doesn't have anything to do with all those things. It's not fearful. Uh, in any way, on any level, because all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. You are 100% able to decide, and you do, to enter hypnosis, to accept the suggestions, which are the mental directives that you hear in a hypnosis session, uh, to accept them, to uh, you know, decide if they're right for you or not, and you can even decide whether to emerge from hypnosis or not. <laughs> There's people that decide I'm feeling so comfortable and so relaxed that I'm just going to stay here for a while. You can decide all of that and you do. Nobody makes you do anything. Nobody can implant anything. So that's what I would tell people who are maybe afraid of hypnosis or wary of it or anything like that is that it's, it's just a perfectly normal thing that we do every day. However, in therapeutic hypnosis, we're taking it a step farther than just waking up, going to sleep, reading all those states that we can get in that are alpha, very, you know, light state of hypnosis. We're taking it down to a very deep state of hypnosis in hypnobirthing uh, because that's where what we need to do to create hypnoanesthesia. And since hypnoanesthesia is the main technique in hypnobabies to help people stay more comfortable, we need to get down to a theta state, which is very slow brain waves. And that puts us into somnambulism. And in somnambulism, we can create hypnoanesthesia and have all these effects and cues, these hypnotic cues retrained into the subconscious mind for use during the birthing. Now, the way that we do that is, and I'll explain to you about the conscious and subconscious minds. The conscious mind is up here. The subconscious mind is down below. And in between, we have what's called the critical faculty. And it's a filter. And it decides what gets completely into the subconscious mind. Sometimes some, some things go straight in. And so what we want to do is make the, the critical faculty take a nap. So we want it to go over there and take a nap. So to do that, the first part of hypnosis is relaxing the entire body from head to toe in a completely supported position so that all body parts are supported and you don't need to do anything with any body parts. They aren't crossed. You don't need them. They just relax into the surface that you're on, whether it's a big cushy chair with a lot of pillows around you or laying down. Hopefully, if you're pregnant, you're laying on your side because that's the safest way. <laughs> um, and then we relax the entire body. And it's not the kind of relaxing that some people think is relaxing where you're laying on a couch and going click, click, click with the remote. It's not that at all. It is a very deep, progressive relaxation from head all the way down to toes. And then each part of the body, the eyes around the mouth, the jaw, the neck and shoulders where we hold a lot of tension and all the way down. And once that is completed, then we relax the mind. And that is maybe by counting backwards from 100. Sometimes it's walking downstairs with therapeutic hypnosis, imagining walking down levels, down, 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 deeper, deeper, deeper. And in that state, when we get down to the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind is where it's a vault. And so everything that we've ever seen or done or heard or felt or experienced, that's in the vault. And so we're not taking anything out, but we do have a belief system about childbirth. So what we're doing is we're giving that belief system new software. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give it the new software 
that starts out with, you know, this is how you relax deeply. This is what hypnosis is. Here's your special safe place. You can go to it anytime you want. And then we just keep compounding and compounding, which is repetition and repetition every single day. And the next week in our hypnobirthing course, we give it a new cue and a new technique the next week and a new one the next week. And they build upon each other. Same basic concepts, a lot of repetition. And that is because the inner mind, the, the subconscious that we're trying to give new software to, is kind of lazy. Hmm. And it just kind of wants to go back to all the old belief systems. But we're not going to let it. <laughs> we're going to listen every single day to one main hypnosis track and our affirmations track, which, as you said, um, what we're doing is the affirmations come from the outside in and they counteract all of those messages we're getting from the outside, like, you know, reading awful birth stories online or seeing birth videos or TV shows about birth or hearing somebody tell you their awful birth story. Having that lady come up in the middle of the supermarket and pat your tummy and tell you this awful thing. <laughs> So um, that's what affirmations are really great for, to keep your con your conscious mind in sync with your subconscious that is now being retrained with this new software over and over and over again, uh, so that in the end, all of those concepts, all those cues and techniques, all of that new knowledge and belief system is right there for you in your birthing time and activated. And that's how it all works. Thank you so much for explaining that. It's it's always so fascinating to hear about the subconscious mind and the different brainwave states and just how science backs all of this. So hopefully, you know, the first time I got hypnosis years and years ago, I've, I'm such a fan of hypnosis. I see a hypnotherapist regularly. Uh, she she records little twenty minute tracks for me based on what I'm working on, and then I listen to them over and over. Um, mm -hmm. I've I've trained with uh, Jose Silva's self hypnosis. Like I, I'm just such a big fan. Um, but I remember being really fearful the first time, like years and years ago, thinking, "Oh my God, they're going to put me under, and I'm going to just tell them all my secrets." <laughs> you know? And it's it's so not that at all. So I think it's important to to demystify it. So what kind of results do you actually see from moms who use the HypnoBabies program? Like, you know, you said something about seven hours. I'd love to hear about that. But what are some of the success stories that you've seen? Well, we have uh, the majority of the people who do HypnoBabies as directed. Uh, and I'll go back to that in a second. They have much easier, more comfortable births. That doesn't mean that everybody has pain-free births with this. We do have people who do, and we do have people who don't. And many people describe it as having strong menstrual cramps. Well, I'll take that any day over what I experienced. And um, it can get pretty ferocious depending on what's going on in your birthing. There are many dynamics that go into childbirth. The position of the baby, the health of the baby, the health of the mother, the people in the room and the things that they're saying to you, uh, you have to choose really well. And we'll teach you that in HypnoBabies, uh, the people that come with you and the effect that they're having on you have to gauge that and whether or not they should stay out in the waiting room or not be there at all. Because right in the moment, you're in hypnosis. And so could be a nurse coming in and saying things like, yeah, you're fine now at five centimeters. You're doing really great. But at seven centimeters, you'll be begging for that epidural. I was. Well, thanks. That's helpful. Boom. <laughs> yeah. That can snap anybody right out of hypnosis. And then they have to get back in. They have to go back in and get deep and, you know, block all of that negativity out. And we give them tools to do that. You'll learn the bubble of peace and all of those things, the fear clearing track all those things that are great tools to use right in the moment. Um, but there's many things that can happen to alter the course of any birthing of anybody who's doing it any way with any method. But I will say 
that it's pretty fascinating when people learn, practice, and use hypnobabies as directed. The majority of people can get through it so much easier, and it's really joyful. And every single birth story that I read heals me from my birth stories that were, you know, painful and traumatizing to me so long ago. So now just being a part of everybody else's birth stories is great. Now, to go back to the part about people learning, practicing, and using hypnobabies as directed, there are issues out there with certain things. One is that there are people whose well-meaning friends will send them a couple of hypnobabies tracks. That's not our program. Yeah. Our program is a complete adult education course. And that is why you're learning and reading everything that you're reading. That is why there are 20 tracks in Hypno Babies. One after another, they basically compound each other and work together. And we can't have people just picking and choosing. I like this one, but not that one. So I'm going to do this one this week, even though I did it last week, and I'm not going to do the one for this week. No. There are people who don't want to read. Okay, but you're not doing Hypno Babies. If you don't read the materials, it just doesn't work that way. So hypno babies. How do they even get away with not reading? Because there's quizzes. <laughs> there's quizzes throughout. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to rag on anybody. I'm just going to say that we are in an age where people do not even read their emails that we send them. We send them confirmation emails that have a ton of information on them for these people to get started more easily. And if they don't read those, they're not going to know. And then the next thing we know, we get an email saying, what, you didn't tell me about blah, blah, blah. Yes, we actually totally did. So it behooves people right from the beginning to read, for instance, the product description of the course. It tells you all about it and what's included in it. And then, and it's a lot of great stuff. Then once you've made your decision to do the course, then read those emails that come, the confirmation email, the welcome email, and the fact that we have a complete support group for you to jump onto. Many people miss that because they don't want to read. But part of any adult education course is reading the materials so that you then can, at the end, do your final exam. And guess what your final exam is? <laughs> the biggest, most important final exam ever, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I'm not so surprised because so many online courses have videos now and people are so used to video with TikTok and YouTube and everything it's like oh wait i have to actually read <laughs> like this is but that's why i asked you about the read if, earlier if you if it was purposeful that you didn't do videos and you did just text instead cuz it like puts you in a state of hypnosis i was like oh that's clever well that i mean that happens automatically it's just that while people can um learn hypno babies in person in our group live classes with an instructor the online course is different mm. you know it is not an instructor sitting in front of a camera trying to interact with you as a student we have short videos but it's not it's more of an uh, a regular college course without the without the videos um, because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the same thing to teach hypno babies that way hmm. online. So you know, you've mentioned fear a couple of times, and I know. So I, I my own story is it took me seven years to get pregnant, and I really believe that part of that was due to fear of pregnancy or fear not even fear of childbirth, fear of pregnancy. Um, and I'm just wondering, how much do you think fear plays a role in making a birth traumatic? Oh, it can be tremendous. We have a fear clearing track just for that because when in pregnancy, for instance, you stay in a state of fear, it changes 
your body chemistry. You are literally creating chemicals and hormones that bathe both you and the baby in catecholamines, which are stress hormones. And that is not good. (laughs) And it constricts things and causes things not to work. People can have high blood pressure at the doctor or, you know, their veins can go flat if they need to give blood. And the baby might be, you know, a recipient of all of these things in addition to not being able to enter their birthing time when the time comes at, you know, 40 weeks because their muscles are constricted because they're so scared. So throughout the last part of your pregnancy, you were able to release fear. And also uh, you get to do that to prepare for releasing fear during your birthing time, because the same thing can happen. And you're very used to releasing the fear already from doing it during pregnancy, but the same thing can happen during birthing where your muscles will constrict. Mm -hmm. And what can happen is the, the big uterus can you know draw up and back with each birthing wave as much as it wants to and at the bottom the neck of the uterus the cervix can stay closed because of that tension because of that fear um causing it to stay closed and then the muscles grind on each other and it just it doesn't work and then it it can cause you know obviously dysfunctional birthing dysfunctional labor to other people And so we want to eliminate fear. That doesn't mean that you can never have it. You simply acknowledge that you have it. It's not a bad thing. And then you release it. Because sitting in fear and thinking about all the things that could go wrong is literally giving your subconscious mind the idea that that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Because whatever you focus and concentrate on, that's what your subconscious mind, like a five-year-old child, thinks that you want. And it's why we tell people that it is probably going to benefit them greatly not to watch scary birth videos, not to read scary birth stories online, go to the Hypno Babies website and read all of ours (laughs) and watch the videos that we have on YouTube, because that tells your inner mind, your subconscious, that that's what you want that you want an easier time of it, that you want a more joyful birthing, that you want things to go smoother. And, you know, for instance, if somebody was to sit around and think every single day of their life, I don't want a cesarean, I don't want a cesarean, I don't want a cesarean. Because they are focusing on that, their inner mind thinks they want a cesarean. And the reason it really thinks they want a cesarean is because the inner mind does not process negatives the same way that it processes positives. So it's going to jump right over the word don't and hear, I want a cesarean over and over and over again in your thoughts. And it's going to say, oh, I, I can do that. Okay. And then it's going to start processes in the body that can produce the exact thing that you don't really want consciously. So we always have to think of what we want and not what we want to avoid. And this is true in life. You know, think about a child. Think about if you were to say to a child, don't go in the street, you'll get hit by a car. The mind's language is imagery. So immediately there's a scary thought there and the child jumps and it's not a good reaction. But if we were to say, stay on the sidewalk, it's safer with mommy. That's what we really want them to do. And they're going to react much better and not have that scary image in their mind. That's exactly what happens with everybody's conscious and subconscious minds. So yeah, we need and that, to just, that food. And that just, yeah. And that just totally ties into what we talk about on this show all the time with the law of attraction, with the reticular activation system, with, uh, you know, I have a whole chapter in my book about language and it's exactly what you said. It's the mind cannot process negative language. So we have to focus on what we want rather than we don't want. Otherwise, you're just going to be working against yourself, just like you explained with the muscles and the body, right? Exactly. So. I know in hypno babies, it's all about deep belly breathing and relaxation. And that feels very different from what, you know, my parents' generation were taught with Lamaze, which is almost like hyperventilating in a way. 
Can you um, talk a little bit about like Lamaze breathing versus uh, what HypnoBabies does? Yeah, sure. I mean, we teach deep abdominal breathing. So when you breathe in, this is just the easiest way for your body and your nervous system to, to relax. When you breathe in through your nose very deeply and let your stomach expand out. So that, and what that means is that your lungs are expanding fully instead of chest breathing. So breathing up here, you're breathing down. So you fill up your lungs and your, your, your belly goes out. And then when you breathe out, you breathe out through your mouth and your belly goes back in. And if you were to sit and just do that, you would go into a state of hypnosis, probably at by at least three minutes of doing that deep abdominal breathing. Well, that promotes relaxation, relaxation of the body and the nervous system and the emotions and everything. So that is why we do it in hypnobabies. And the more it is practiced, the more easy it is to do in the birth. And the reason you would want to do it in the birth is to deeply relax. You can relax when you're doing deep abdominal breathing, and it becomes absolutely automatic when you're using hypnosis because you have done it so many times in hypnosis. In the beginning of every single track in Hypno Babies, there's deep abdominal breathing, and you have already practiced it and practiced it and practiced it so that it becomes automatic as soon as each hypnosis track starts or as soon as you start doing it yourself. If you decide, I'm just going to breathe. On the flip side of that, and I am not ragging on Lamaz, so please do not send me emails about this. This is not a Lamaz thing. This is just a breathing thing. This is what happens in the body. And I don't even think they teach this in Lamaz anymore because of this effect. So please don't come at me. Uh, but the breathing that I believe used to be taught was a quick breath in, a chest breath and then breathing out, or he, 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 he. These things cause hyperventilation. That means that the oxygen mix within our body changes. We're putting off too much CO2. It can actually make you feel very dizzy, and it changes the oxygen mix for you and the baby. So the, the deeper you breathe, and the slower you breathe, the more oxygen you get, the more oxygen baby gets. But the quicker and the more chesty your breaths are, the less oxygen you get and the less oxygen baby gets. That oxygen mix is off. In addition to that, you need to relax really deeply and have a lot of energy left over to push that baby out. So during the time, which is other people call transition, and we call transformation in hypnobabies, um, and there's a reason for that. If we have time, I'll tell you uh, that we, many people were, were taught to do that he, he, hoo, hoo, and focus on something on the wall. And doing that uses up a huge amount of energy, changes that op oxygen mix and causes this hyperventilation. So the next phase is pushing the baby out. And there isn't a lot of energy left to do that. However, if you have been relaxing during the rest of your birth and breathing deeply through the rest of your birth, when you go to push your baby out, you have lots of energy and lots of oxygen with which to do that. So that's the answer to that. Yeah, thanks again for explaining the science because it's just so interesting to me. And, you know, I know you also use binaural beats in your hypnosis tracks. And binaural beats are, is just something that I've used forever to, to just put me in a state of relaxation or meditation or, I guess, hypnosis. Can you explain a little bit of the science behind binaural beats for those who don't know what they are? Binaural beats, it's a system which in which the um, music is recorded at different frequencies. So in say the left ear, you have one frequency and this is, you know, by virtue of wearing headphones, it doesn't work if you're just listening to speakers. So in the left ear gets one frequency, the right ear gets another frequency. So this was how it was mixed and in, in the middle, right in the middle, a new frequency is created. 
And that does several things. It does help people to relax more. It is more in league with their own body, their own body's rhythms, their own heartbeat, everything. And so it it allows you to relax quicker, easier, and go deeper into hypnosis if that is your goal. It also causes hemispheric synchronization. So there's two sides of the brain and it causes them to sync up so that one is not more dominant and that also helps with the process of whatever it is you're trying to learn or create. So it it helps with relaxation, learning and creativity. So that's the that's the explanation of that. And, and we have the it. binaural beats in the background of all of our hypno babies hypnosis tracks, not in the affirmations track, because we don't want you to start hearing the music and instantly go into hypnosis. With the affirmations track, we have different music because we want you to not be in hypnosis. We want you to be walking around. We want you to be cooking, playing with the other kids, you know, doing whatever you want to do and hearing these messages you know, these positive messages at any time in your day, whereas the hypnosis tracks can only be listened to in a completely relaxed, uh, fully supportive position with your eyes closed. So So no driving while you're listening to hypnosis. No driving. You'll be hypnoing off the side of the road. Yeah, we don't want that. Um, Okay, so you've you you just mentioned it a moment ago. You've you've brought it up several times. Uh, Hypno babies use a special language. I'd love to hear a few examples of that for our listeners and why that choice was made. Okay, so we use words that are a little different. So instead of using the word labor, um, we use the word birthing or birthing time. And uh, instead of using contractions, we use the words pressure waves or birthing waves. And there are other ones like transformation for transition and uh, guest date instead of due date and things like that. The reason is because words really mean something. They mean something on different levels. So there is a literal meaning of the word, the denotation, and that is what we all know. For instance, labor means work. If you think of just labor generically, not in relation to childbirth. However, in relation to childbirth, it also means hard work. Mm. And anyone who's heard the word labor in relation to being pregnant automatically gets, you know, a jolt of adrenaline, even if it's a micro jolt, because of the word labor is associated with so many negative things. And that is the same thing with the word transition. Transition is a wonderful word to use to describe that period of time in the birthing where we are changing from dilating waves to pushing the baby out waves. There is a period of time right in the middle of there. However, the word transfer, twan, transition has been used in so many negative birth stories and articles and websites and everywhere in movies uh, to describe that period of time as being the shortest period of time, quote unquote, but the hardest. Your contractions will come one on top of another and you won't have any break in between and they'll be the hardest ones that you have during your whole birthing. Well, as soon as we hear that word, it's not just a microburst of adrenaline. <laughs> it's a big one, even if we're not aware of it. And there are people who say, oh, these words don't affect me. That may be true on a conscious level, but your subconscious mind has heard all these birth stories and seen all these videos and knows that it's scared to death. Because if that's, if transition is part of the birthing, whoa, Nelly. And so it, it causes fear. So we use a different word. Guest date we use because no one should be fixating on a date on the calendar. There's no such thing as a due date. It's very simply you are either due sometime in October or at the end of December or something like that because that helps you so much to just relax and know that baby can choose its own birth date, whatever. You know, as soon as we become fixated at a date, an actual date where the word due is in front of it, then we become. 
you know, scared and anxious that we're going to pass that date or a baby's going to come too early for that date. And maybe that date is too close to dad's birthday and this and that and the other thing. Just let it go. So we do all of this because of the association of those words with what they mean to us emotionally, which is the connotation of a word. So we create new connotations with new words. That makes sense. That That makes sense. I didn't, I didn't really understand the due date one with the guest date, but now that you explain it, it makes so much sense. Cause I imagine as people get close, it's like, oh my gosh, am I going to go past my due date? Am I going to go before my due date? And that can create anxiety. So uh, you've really thought of everything. Um, okay, last question, because we have to wrap it up. And it's just a very simple one. Is it you who does the hypnosis track? Yes, it is. <laughs> deeper and deeper. <laughs> more and more relaxed. Okay, and now I recognize it. <laughs> very cool. Um, so. It was such a pleasure to have you on today. I, I love that you brought the science aspect to it. I, you know, your program is, you know, I just started it four days ago because you started at 28 weeks. And by the way, I don't even know if you said this, but for listeners, I, I guess you kind of touched on it, but it's a pretty regimented program. It's six weeks long. There's assignments for every single day. Uh, you have to do a certain amount of reading each week. So you you commit to it. But luckily, you give us a little schedule here, and I'm marking off the days, and that helps. And uh, it's wonderful so far. So uh, tell people how they can find you, how they can find Hypno Babies, uh, any any special promos or anything you've got going on. Okay. <laughs> well, we have a, a very extensive website at hypnobabies.com where you can find just about information about any aspect of of our program and what hypnosis is and how to find a hypno babies class. If you want to attend one with a live instructor, we also have a store at hypno babies store.com. And that's where our online hypno birthing courses are our breastfeeding course, our fertility course, our hypno doula course, and all of our individual tracks and sets. Um, we will be happy Chris, to create a 25% off discount code for your listeners. If you would like that, you can put in the show notes. Just let me know and I will get that to you. I don't know. I don't think listeners would like that, right? Listeners, no. Uh, that's very, very generous of you. And, uh, you know, you, I've only known you a short time, but you've already been so generous and I appreciate you. And I'm sure our listeners would appreciate that. So I'll definitely get that in the show notes. And if you're driving, listening to this, all the links uh, that Carrie was just talking about are in the show notes. So no need to try and write it down. Uh, just like we don't want you in hypnosis while you're driving. We don't want you trying to type things out or write things down. Uh, so Carrie, thank you so much for joining. It was a pleasure to talk to you. You're just such a wealth of knowledge and passion and heart, and it really comes through. Uh, for everyone else, please like, share, subscribe, help us spread the good word. Check out my book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality. Also in the show notes, you'll see all my links where you can work with me, uh, attend free workshops, and let's try to spread all this good love around the world. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.